Good morning. Good morning. This is my first product launch since being named CEO. I'm sure you didn't know that. <laughs> and it is a pleasure to host you today. I love Apple. And I consider it the privilege of a lifetime to have worked here for almost 14 years. And I am very excited about this new role. I want to especially welcome you to this campus. Uh, this campus serves as a kind of second home for many of us. <laughs> so it's sort of like inviting you into our home. And in particular, I want to welcome you to this room that we call our town hall. Uh, this room, town hall, has quite a history at Apple. Just 10 years ago, we launched the original iPod here, and it went on to revolutionize the way we listen to music. And just one year ago, we launched the new MacBook Air, which has fundamentally changed the way people think about notebook computers. Today, we'll remind you of the uniqueness of this company as we announce innovations from our mobile operating system to applications, to services, to hardware. And more importantly, the integration of all of these into a powerful yet simple and integrated experience. It's an extraordinary time to be at Apple. And I'd like to get started with a few updates. Apple has enormous momentum, and nowhere is that more evident than in our retail stores. Just last weekend, we opened two new stores in China, one in Hong Kong and one in Shanghai. Both of these stores are amazing, and both have set new records. This store is on Nanjing Road in Shanghai in the center of the city in a very famous shopping district. It is absolutely gorgeous. It has like an iconic glass staircase. I think only Apple could do this. It is our largest store in Asia and set a record for welcoming 100,000 visitors for opening weekend. By comparison, when we opened our top store in LA, we thought we had done well when we welcomed 100,000 visitors over the course of one month. There is amazing momentum here. This is our first store in Hong Kong. It's atop the Airport Express Railway. It's also a beautiful store. And if you happen to be at the Genius Bar or in for a one-to-one -one training session on the second floor, you can sneak a view of Victoria Harbor, which is the, absolutely the signature view of Hong Kong. It's also a, just an incredible store. And look at this. Only Apple could do this. We also had a few people <laughs> to, to share our opening with in Hong Kong. We sold more Macs on opening day in this store than we have in any other store in the world. And it was one of the best opening days in our retail history. Now, rather than listen to me talk about this, I'd like to show you a short video to give you a feel of the excitement and the energy around our retail.
I think I've watched that 100 times, and I could watch it 100 more easily. We now have six stores in China, and we're going to do lots more. This brings our total worldwide to 357 in 11 countries, and we will continue to invest in more and more stores and raise the bar on retail. Now, our products are at the core of everything we do and are responsible for the momentum that we have. And I'd like to briefly walk through each of our four product areas and give you a little bit of an update on each one. First up is the Macintosh. You can't talk about the Mac without talking about Lion, which we just introduced last quarter. And the reviews here have been incredible. Walt Mossberg of the Wall Street Journal said, it's the best computer operating system out there. I don't think I could have said it better. <laughs> and for the first time ever, we offered Lion to, as a digital download only. This is incredible. And the results have been staggering because I'm pleased to report that we have downloaded over 6 million copies of Lion. This is 80% more than Snow Leopard, which was our previous edition, which was a great release. Now, as another metric to show you how successful this is, we measure adoption, which is the percentage of uh, people uh, that upgrade to a uh, new software. If you look at Windows 7, it took Windows 7 about 20 weeks to reach 10% of their install base. Lion did this in two weeks, one-tenth of the time. At the same time we announced Lion, we announced the new MacBook Air. And if, I assume you know about the new MacBook Air, but it's thin and light and beautiful and wicked fast. Our customers love it, and our competitors have been trying to copy it, but they're finding it's not so simple. But more importantly, the customers love it. And here's an example of what's been said. Wired Magazine, after years of hoping and searching, I finally found Laptop Nirvana. Now, the MacBook Air is just a portion of our entire lineup of Macintoshes, which are the best that we've ever shipped. And customers have really responded to the Mac. In fact, the MacBook Pro and the iMac are the number one best-selling notebook and desktop in the United States. And this momentum is not just limited to a model. In fact, if you look at it across the last year ending in June, the Mac outgrew the PC market by almost six times. This is incredible. And it's not just a year. In fact, every single quarter for five years, the Mac has outgrown the PC market. And we are now approaching 60 million users around the world. 60 million. With all of this momentum, our market share has uh, steadily increased, and I'm pleased to report that in U.S. retail, the Macs now are selling about one of four PCs sold in the store. Now, for those of you that have followed Apple for a while, you know that it wasn't too long ago that this number was in the mid-single digits. Now, having said that, there's still 77% of the people that are buying something else. What does this mean? Well, we have an incredibly high ceiling here. We have a lot to go. So that's the Mac. We're very, very pleased with how the Mac is going. Next up is music. And of course, music for us is iTunes and iPod. And as I said earlier, it was only 10 years ago that iPod launched. And it not only revolutionized the way we all listen to music, but it revolutionized the whole music industry. And, and maybe what's more important than that on a personal level is it reminded all of us how much we love music. 
and made it so simple to enjoy again. And it became a part of our lives from studying to commuting to exercising to just hanging out at home. And across that period of time, iPod became the number one music player in the world. And in the United States, the market share has been above 70% for a very long time. Over that period of time, we now have cumulatively sold over 300 million iPods around the world. And to put that in some context for you, it took Sony 30 years to sell 220,000 Walkman cassette players. Truly amazing. Now, the MP3 market is a mature market. But this is still a large, and iPod is still a large and important market for Apple. And we've sold 45 million iPods in the last year ending in June. And what's more encouraging is that almost half of those are going to people who are buying their first iPod. And many are going to people who are just being introduced to Apple through the iPod. So this, is, this remains a very important business for us. Now, you can't talk about music without talking about iTunes. iTunes started about eight years ago. Uh, we started with 200,000 songs in our music library. We now have 100 times that many, 20 million songs offered for sale. The features of the store are absolutely incredible and are things that no one could dream of back in 2003. It is the number one music store in the world, and we've now downloaded over 16 billion songs. It's mind-boggling. And so that's our music business. We're very happy with the music business. Next up is iPhone. This could be a reason why the room is full today. You know, what's amazing is that iPhone 4, in a very short period of time, has sold over half of the total iPhones sold the entire time we've been selling. And it's become the number one smartphone in the world. And that momentum continued in the second calendar quarter far outpacing the industry. And this momentum isn't just in you know, one type of market like consumer. In fact, 93% of the Fortune 500 companies are testing or deploying the iPhone, 93%. And what's more important than all of this is that customers love iPhone. And it's consistently rated number one in every customer satisfaction ranking I can find. And it's not number one by a small amount. In fact, the iPhone is pummeling the competition. These are the people that answered very satisfied, which is the high bar of the customer sat survey. If you include the people that answered satisfied, iPhone goes to 96%. These are numbers that are hard to imagine for any product. Also, for six times in a row, J.D. Powers has rated the iPhone number one in customer satisfaction in the smartphone category. Now, despite all of this success and all of this momentum, the iPhone has 5% share of the worldwide market of handsets. I could have shown you a much larger number if I just showed you smartphones. But that's not how we look at it. We look at the entire market of handsets because we believe over time that all handsets become smartphones. This market is one and a half billion units annually. It's an enormous opportunity for Apple. And that's iPhone. 
More coming up on iPhone. <laughs> Next up is our youngest business, youngest product category, the iPad. People have been thrilled with both the original iPad and the iPad 2 that we announced earlier uh, in this year. The customer sat ratings on this product show that there's a lot of love for this product. 95% score in our most recent survey. 95%. And they are showing up everywhere. iPads in schools are helping kids learn in amazing new ways. We believe that iPads can change the way teachers teach and kids learn. And many educators agree with us. In fact, every state in the US now has an iPad pilot program or deployment going in place or in place today. And almost 1,000 K-12 schools have a one-to-one -one program so a kid can enjoy the iPad for the entire day. And it's not just happening in K-12. Higher ed is also doing this. Over about 1,000 universities across the US, including universities like Stanford and Notre Dame, University of Pennsylvania, University of Chicago, all have iPad programs. And it's just not in the classroom, in the cockpit. Pilots are using them. They are replacing 40-pound flight bags full of paper manuals and log books and navigation charts and checklists, making the pilot more efficient and making the plane more fuel efficient. Yes, it's true. <laughs> They're also showing up in hospitals where medical professionals are using them to access patient records, to review medical images, to administer bedside care. Over 80% of the top hospitals in the US are now testing or piloting iPads. And it doesn't stop here. In fact, from the boardroom to the back room and everywhere in between, iPad is showing up. And at this point, and this is a stunning number, 92% of the Fortune 500 companies are testing or deploying iPad. This is in less than 18 months. It is unheard of. With the momentum in consumer, in education, in enterprise, in any, and everywhere else, iPad is the undisputed top-selling tablet in the world. And despite everybody and their brother trying to compete with iPad, three out of the four tablets sold in the US are iPods. Three out of four. Perhaps all things D said it best. Consumers don't want tablets. They want iPads. Now iPad is powered by the world's most advanced mobile operating system along with iPhone and iPod Touch. And I'm pleased to tell you this morning that we have passed the quarter of a billion unit sales mark. <laughs> Today, we're taking it to the next level. I'm very pleased to ask Scott Forstall to come up to take us through the latest innovations in iOS. Scott? Thanks, Tim. So as Tim said, we've already sold more than a quarter billion iOS devices. 
And that makes iOS the number one mobile operating system, now with 43% of the market. Now, not only do our customers love our devices, they love using our devices. If you look at just mobile browser usage, iOS accounts for 61% of the market. So our customers love browsing the web. They also love apps from the App Store. And our developers have been prolific. Already, we have more than 500,000 apps on the App Store. And more than 140,000 of these are made specifically for the iPad. Now, that gives anyone who owns an iPad a better experience using the iPad with these great dedicated applications made for that large touch screen. And all of this together makes the App Store the number one store for mobile apps. Now, our customers love these apps and have been downloading them like crazy. In fact, in just a little more than three years, customers have downloaded more than 18 billion apps. And it's accelerating. Customers are now downloading apps at a clip of more than a billion per month. This is amazing. Now, our developers are being well rewarded for their work building apps. Apple has already paid more than $3 billion to developers for those apps on the App Store. Now, in addition to all of the apps that we ship as part of iOS, Apple makes a number of other apps that we make available on the App Store. Let me tell you about one brand new one today, and that is Cards. Cards is an app which lets you create and mail beautiful cards right from your iPhone or iPod Touch. You can customize them with your own photos and text. If you just make the card on your phone or your iPod Touch, Apple does the rest. We'll print it out on high quality, 100% cotton paper with these beautiful debossed designs. If you zoom in, you can see the quality of these cards in the letterpress. You can choose from between 21 different designs and six different categories. Things like thank you cards, holiday cards, birth announcements, birthday cards, love, and travel. Now all you do is create the card on your iPhone, and we'll do the rest. We'll print out the card, put it in an envelope, affix postage, and mail it for you. And what's really cool is if you mail it to an address in the United States, we'll add the US Postal Service's intelligent mail barcode right down at the bottom. And that allows us to send you a push notification the day it's delivered. So you know when your card gets there. Very cool. Now, again, we'll affix Apple-designed postage right to the card and mail it. If you mail it to an address anywhere in the United States, it's only $2.99. That's for the card, the envelope, the postage, mailing it, everything. And it's only $4.99 if you mail it anywhere else in the world. Cards will be a free download on October 12th. And that's Cards. Now, Cards joins all of these other apps that Apple has, plus the more than a half a million other incredible apps in the App Store. All right, let's talk about iOS 5. It was just a few months ago that we introduced iOS 5. And we've already seeded more than 100,000 developers. And they love it. And they've given us such positive feedback. We can't wait to get it in everyone else's hands. So let me quickly recap what comes in iOS 5. It comes with more than 200 new user features. And let me just quickly recap 10 of the top ones, starting with notifications. We have a great solution for notifications in iOS 5. We have a new notification center. You can get to it any time just by swiping your finger down from the top, and you get all of your notifications. Notifications are no longer blocking. So if you're playing a game and a notification comes up, it just subtly comes up at the top, doesn't interrupt you. You can keep on playing the game. It'll dismiss itself. From the lock screen, you can see more of your notifications. And you can just swipe across any of these, and it'll take you directly to the app that sent the notification. So notifications. Next up is iMessage. 
iMessage is a new messaging service between iOS users. It supports the iPhone, the iPad, and the iPod Touch. You can send text, photos, videos. You get delivery and optional read receipts. You can see a typing indication when someone's responding to you. iMessages are pushed to all your devices. So you can pick up on one device where you left off on another. They're sent over 3G and Wi-Fi. So now we support our Wi-Fi only devices like the iPod Touch. And your messages are securely encrypted end to end. That's iMessage. Next up is a brand new app, and it's Reminders. Reminders allows you to create reminders like pick up dry cleaning, make a dinner reservation. You can have location-based reminders. So you could say, remind me to pick up my dry cleaning when I leave work. And it'll set up a geofence around where you are, and when you leave work, it'll pop up that reminder. You can have simple reminders, like a grocery list. And all of these reminders will sync with both Exchange and with iCloud. And that's reminders. Next up is Twitter integration. We have integrated Twitter deeply into the OS. So now you can go right to settings, sign into your Twitter account, and now you don't have to sign in again for other apps on the App Store or our apps. And then we've integrated Twitter into many of the built-in apps, like Photos. So now you can take a photo and tweet that photo right from there. This is what the tweet sheet looks like. It's gorgeous. So you can tweet photos. You can tweet websites from Safari, videos from YouTube, locations for maps, and more. So deep integration of Twitter. Next up is Newsstand. Newsstand makes it even better to experience reading newspapers and magazines on your iPad, especially subscriptions. And there are a lot of publications now that are building subscriptions for the iPad. Things like The New Yorker, Martha Stewart Living, Esquire, GQ, Allure, Vanity Fair, and great newspapers like The New York Times. Now we've created a new location in the App Store that gathers all of these subscription newspapers and magazines together so it's easy to find them. And once you've subscribed, we place it in a single location right on your home screen. And we download new issues in the background. So while you're sleeping, if the newspaper comes out, by the time you wake up in the morning, the icon is set to the cover page, and it's ready for you to read. And that is Newsstand. Next up is camera. We know how popular the camera is on the iPhone, and so we're making it even better. The first thing we want to do is make it really easy to quickly get to the camera and take a photo. So now if you double click on the home button, this new button appears, the camera button. And if you tap on that, you're taken directly and immediately to the camera app and you're ready to take a photo. You don't need to even type in a passcode, you're right there and ready to take it. And you can even optionally use the volume up button to take that photo. You can add optional grid lines to line up your photo or use the rule of thirds to compose it. You can pinch to zoom right in the viewfinder. You can put your finger down and hold it on a given location, and it'll set the auto exposure and auto focus lock to that point. Now, this is a really advanced feature of a camera made simple on the iPhone. Once you've taken your photos, you can now edit them right on your iOS device as well. You can crop and rotate. You can remove red eye. You see this red eye in here with a single tap. It's removed. And you can do one tap enhance. And this goes beyond just red eye removal, but will actually pull things out of the shadow, improve skin tones, and just generally make your photo look better. So some great enhancements to photos and camera. Next up is Game Center. Game Center has only been out for about a year, and it's been a huge hit. We already have more than 67 million people signed up using Game Center. But we're making it even better. We're adding photos so you can see your friends. We're adding achievement points so you can compare how you're doing against your friends. We're giving friend recommendations so you can find other people to play games with and against. And game recommendations. So it's easier to find that new game that you didn't know about, but you're going to love it. And there's more. And that's Game Center. Next up, Safari. Now, I showed you the stats earlier and how popular Safari is. 
And so we want to make it even better. And we've added a number of things. One is reader. You see up top there's this new reader button. When you tap on that button, we take the story on the web page you're currently on and we format it perfectly for that device. We get rid of all the extraneous information. We set the font size right. Even if it's a multi-page story, it's all loaded so you can just scroll through it and read it. This works great on the iPad. It's fantastic on the iPhone. Just sets everything nice and easy for you to read the story. Now, if you don't have time to read the story right now, just add it to the reading list. There's another new feature. And you can come back and read it later. And the reading list syncs between your iOS devices. And so you could add it on the iPad, then later go back and read it on your iPhone. This next feature is one of my favorites, and it's tab browsing. We have added full tab browsing to the iPad, and it makes it really easy to quickly switch between websites, compare them, and I have to say, it's, it's changed the way that I browse the web now on my iPad. So some great enhancements to Safari. Next up is Mail. We've made Mail better in a number of ways. We've added rich text formatting, so you can set bold, italic, underline, control the indentation, drag addresses between the two, CC and BCC. You can flag messages. In addition to searching the from, to, and subject, you can now search the entire body of a message, including messages back on the server that aren't even on your iPhone. And for the iPad, we have a nice one where you can just swipe to get to the inbox very quickly in portrait and dismiss it. It's really nice. So some nice enhancements to mail. Next up is PC free. Now it used to be the case that to own an iOS device you had to own a computer. Because the first thing you had to do is plug into a computer. But we have a lot of customers that they just want to buy an iPhone or an iPad as their only device. And that is now possible with iOS 5. Now when you take it out of the box, it looks like this. You set it up and you're good to, you're good to go. There's no need for a computer. And we've gone beyond that. We've added support for wireless updates. And so now you can stay up to date on the most recent software without using a computer. You can do it all wirelessly. And that is PC free. And again, these are just 10 of the more than 200 new features that come with iOS 5. iOS 5 will support the iPhone 3GS and the iPhone 4, the iPad, the iPad 2, and the third and fourth generation iPod Touch iOS 5 is a free update and will be available on October 12th next week. And that is iOS 5. <laughs> to walk you through iCloud, I'd like to invite up Eddie Q. Eddie. Thanks, Scott. It's great to have everyone here at Apple today, and I want to talk to you about iCloud. So iCloud stores your content and wirelessly pushes it to all of your devices. We've integrated it right into our apps so that everything happens automatically. So let's say I'm on my iPhone, for example, and I take a photo. iCloud saves it right to our cloud and automatically pushes it to all of our devices. There's no syncing. There's nothing new to learn. It just works. And iCloud is free. So let's start by talking about music, photos, and documents. First, iTunes in the cloud. So over a third of the music we sell on the iTunes store is purchased directly on iOS devices. This means our music is now on multiple devices, and keeping it in sync can be frustrating. Well, now, when I'm on my iPad in the iTunes store, I'm looking at the Beatles 1 album, and I buy it. It starts downloading to my iPad, but at the same time, it also downloads to my iPhone, and it downloads to iTunes on my Mac and PC. There's no syncing. It's that simple. But what if I want to listen to a song on my iPhone that I previously purchased on iTunes, but it's not on this device? Well, I can go to the new purchased area in the iTunes store, and I can see a list of all of the albums and songs that I previously purchased. And with just a tap of one button, I can download any of them at no additional cost. Now, this works exactly the same way for TV shows. I can see all the TV shows that I previously purchased, all the episodes, and I can watch any of them at no additional cost. I can even watch them right on my Apple TV. 
and that's iTunes in the cloud. Next, we've done something really remarkable with photos. A lot of us are taking all of our photos on our iPhone. It's always with us. The photos look gorgeous. But these photos are now in your camera roll, and you wish they were on all your devices. Well, with PhotoStream, all I do is take my photo on my iPhone, like I do today, and it's automatically saved to iCloud and pushed to all your devices. Here it is on my iPad. We've built it right into the Photos app in a new album called PhotoStream. So now that photo that I just took on my iPhone, I can see right on my iPad. And it even downloads right to iPhoto on my Mac. And I can see it on Apple TV. And that's PhotoStream. Next, documents in the cloud. So iOS revolutionized the way we manage our documents because we don't have to. Apps manage them for us. Well, documents in the cloud makes this even better. Because now, when I create a new document, say on Pages on my iPad, it's automatically saved and stored in iCloud. So when I launch Pages on my iPhone, the document is right there. And I can open it and start editing right where I left off. My documents are updated across my devices. We also have a set of APIs available so that apps can store their documents in the cloud. As a matter of fact, we use those APIs to build documents in the cloud into Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. And all of them are available as a free update on iOS. If you don't have any of them, you can buy them on the App Store for $9.99. And they're available on October 12th. And that's Documents in the Cloud. So iCloud, it includes iTunes in the Cloud, PhotoStream, Documents in the Cloud, but it's a whole lot more than that. Just like music, when you purchase an app on one device, it's automatically downloaded to all of your devices. And you can go to the purchase area and see all of the apps that you previously purchased, and you can download any of them at no additional cost. Like apps and music, books works exactly the same way. You buy a book on your iPad, you start reading it, you go to your iPhone, and you, get, you open the same book and start reading right where you left off. Another feature of iCloud is backup. iCloud does a daily backup of your most important data from your iOS devices. So when you get a new device, you can easily restore it right from iCloud. Contacts, updated across all your devices. Add a new contact, change a phone number on one device, it's updated on all your devices. Calendars work exactly the same way. Your calendars are updated across all your devices. You can even share calendars with other iCloud users. Mail, you get an ad-free me.com mail account that pushes mail to all of your devices. Find My iPhone is also a part of iCloud. It lets you easily locate your iPhone, your iPad, and your iPod Touch. And now, it even let, lets you locate your Mac. Now, Find My iPhone is really great, but what if you could find your family and friends? Well, today, we're announcing a new app called Find My Friends. And when you launch it, you see a list of your family and friends that are sharing their location with you. So now, when I'm in Disneyland, for example, I can easily see where my family is. I can even see if my son made it to school OK today. <laughs> I'm sure that wasn't him. <laughs> now, that's great. But sometimes you just want to share your location for just a few hours or a day. Well, creating a temporary event is really easy. Let's say I'm going to have a picnic at the beach. I'm going to invite three of my friends to share their location with me. But I'm going to say that location sharing ends on Saturday at 7 PM. So now, when we get to the beach, we can easily find each other throughout the day. But at the end of the day, location sharing just stops automatically. So find my friends. Easily locate your friends and family. Temporary sharing option. Simple privacy controls, so you can turn off your location sharing with just one switch. And parental restrictions, so that parents can restrict their kids from turning off Find My Friends. <laughs> And they can decide who follows them. And that's Find My Friends 
And all of this is part of iCloud. iCloud is free for iOS 5 users and Mac OS X Lion users. It comes with unlimited free storage for your purchased music, TV shows, apps, and books, and five gigabytes for your mail, documents, and backup. Now, that's plenty of room for most people, but if you want more, you can easily upgrade right on the device. Now, a really great add-on to iCloud is called iTunes Match. And before the iTunes Music Store, we acquired our music in a lot of different ways. CDs, for example. What if we could give all of that music the same benefits as the music purchased from iTunes? Well, in order to do that, we've got to get all that music to iCloud. Well, it turns out it's probably already there, because as Tim told you, we have the largest music store in the world with over 20 million songs. So rather than take every song in your iTunes music library and upload it to iCloud, which could take weeks, we'll scan and match each song against the 20 million songs already in iCloud. And the few that we don't find, we'll upload. This means your iTunes music library is now in iCloud, and we can do some really great things. Let's say you've got an iPad here and there's no music on it. I go in and I turn on iTunes Match, and now I can see my whole iTunes music library, every single song. And I can stream any song by just tapping on it. But it's even better than that. I see all of my playlists. I can edit a playlist or create a new playlist, and those are automatically updated across all my devices. So iTunes Match. It scans and matches your library against our 20 million songs. We'll upload what we don't find. We'll stream any song, album, or playlist. We'll cache the songs you listen to most right on your device. And for match songs, we'll upgrade them to our iTunes pristine quality. And you get all of this for just $24.99 a year. And that's iTunes Match. So iCloud, it's an amazing and comprehensive set of cloud services, including contacts, calendars, mail, cloud, backup, iTunes in the cloud, photo stream, documents in the cloud, apps, books, find my iPhone and find my friends, and that's iCloud. iCloud will ship on October 12th, the same day as iOS 5. iTunes Match ships at the end of the month in the US, and we're working very hard to add additional countries before the end of the year. And we've created a short video that shows how iCloud makes your life easier every day, and I'd like to show it to you now. With iCloud, when you buy a song on one device, it instantly downloads to all your others. Take a picture here, and it shows up there. Start a project in one place, and pick up right where you left off in another. the moment here and it's waiting for you there make a change on this and it updates on that and with iCloud it all works automatically and wirelessly so you always have the things you want exactly where you want them. So that's iCloud, and I'd like to ask Phil Schiller to please uh, join us here. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm really pleased to talk to you about the iPod. And we started the iPod simply because we love music. And that hasn't stopped. We still love music. And we're still making great iPods. In fact, it's the best lineup we've ever made. 
the Shuffle, the Nano, the iPod Touch. So I'd like to give you updates to two of those lines today. First, iPod Nano. Just last year, we introduced an all-new iPod Nano, and it's a really fun way to enjoy your music wherever you are. And customers love it for its compact design, its multi-touch display, it's built in volume buttons and a clip so you can wear it wherever you go. It has a pedometer and even a built-in FM radio. So we've added some updates this year. First, with this multi-touch display, we decided to make it even easier to navigate. And so now you can display big, beautiful icons for all of the features on it and just swipe between them with your finger to switch between the radio, the clock, the fitness application. It's really simple. And fitness, of course, is one of the most popular uses for the Nano. You can use it when you go to the gym, when you go on one of those walks. A lot of people like to run with their iPod Nano. So we've improved the fitness experience as well. Now, right out of the box with the iPod Nano, you can go on not only a walk, but a run as well, without adding any extra sensors or devices right out of the box. You go for your run, you come back, you plug your Nano into your Mac or PC, and you can upload all the data about your run right up onto Nike Plus's website and track all of your runs over time, look for achievements, compete with friends. It's a really great way to get fit. So that's one of the really great uses of an iPod Nano. There's a really cool use that some people have created all on their own. <laughs> without, without us doing this, they created a market of accessories like watch bands to make this watch you can wear that's an iPod Nano. It has all your music in it and, of course, tells time. And we thought that was really fun. We see this around the world. So with the updated Nano, we've added in the software some new clock faces to make it fun for people who like to wear it as a watch. Why not, right? So here's one. This is a classic, great, beautiful watch with Roman numerals. Or maybe you want a retro LED-style watch on your wrist. A watch with some really cool complications. Or a watch that's color-coordinated with the color Nano you picked. And then this is really fun. We've worked with good partners at Disney on some characters you can have on your watch. So if you want a Mickey Mouse watch, <laughs> you can now get one. Yeah. Yes, the arms move to keep track of time, or you can get Minnie Mouse as well. So it's really cool. There's the I iPod Nano comes in seven gorgeous colors. It's been priced for eight gigabytes at 149 and 16 gigabytes at 179. Well, now the iPod Nano just 149 for 16 gigs and 129 for 8 gigs, making it the most affordable Nano we've ever had. <laughs> so that Nano is available today. Next, iPod Touch. As you heard earlier, the iPod Touch is now our most popular iPod. And it's no surprise that it's so incredible. It's amazingly thin. It's got that beautiful retina display. Does FaceTime video calling. You can do HD video with the built-in camera. It has a gyro, so all those great apps and games you download have amazing gameplay. In fact, not only is it the most popular music player in the world, we're just so proud that it's now become the most popular portable game player as well. So it is a great device. And of course, it's going to now run iOS 5. And all those great things that Scott talked to you about, the iPod, the iPod Touch does those as well. But some of them make amazing sense on an iPod Touch. So if you think about it, for example, iMessage. An iPod Touch isn't a phone. It doesn't have text messaging. But now with iMessage, you can communicate with your friends and family who are also using iMessage. You can text. You can send photos. You can take videos and send them along. You can send your location. And parents like it because on Wi-Fi, it's free and unlimited. So it's really neat. And we said it's the most popular portable gaming device. So of course, the things Scott talked to you about, about Game Center, make perfect sense. Now you can discover new friends. You can find new games to play and download them and challenge each other. It is perfect for this great mobile gaming device. So iOS 5 is a tremendous upgrade for the iPod Touch. And so is iCloud. Think of all those things Scott, that, that Eddie talked to you about, iCloud. They're even more powerful when you think about it on an iPod Touch. So now wherever you are, this amazingly thin iPod can have access to all of your music, all of your books, all of your documents, all the TV shows you want to watch. 
and you can get access to all of them right from your iPod Touch. So the iPod Touch now comes with iOS 5 and iCloud, huge things in their own right. In addition, it comes in both black and now white as well, a brand new white version, and it's gorgeous. The iPod Touch has been priced at $229 for an 8 gigabyte version. Well, now it's going to be $199, a key price point. For a 32 gigabyte version, it's $299, and for a 64 gigabyte version, $399. And this will be available when iOS 5 ships on October 12th. So going into the holiday season, this is the lineup. And look at it. It's a great lineup with perfect price points. The iPod Shuffle for just $49. The iPod Nano starting at $129. The iPod Touch at $199. Really, something great at every price point for anyone who loves music. So that's iPod and the iPod lineup. We love music. And we're going to continue making the world's best music players. Next, iPhone. As you know, last year, we introduced iPhone 4. And it's a breakthrough phone. And despite competitors trying really hard to copy it, they really haven't come to close to anything nearly as good. It's got that beautiful retina display, glass front, all glass back, the revolutionary stainless steel bands that create the antenna system and make it the thinnest smartphone. And as you've heard, it's the number one smartphone in the world and number one in customer satisfaction. So people have been wondering, how do you follow up a hit product like the iPhone 4? Well, I'm really pleased to tell you today all about the brand new iPhone 4S. <laughs> of course, it starts with the retina display. Of course, it's glass in the front and back and has that incredible stainless steel band around it, making it the thinnest smartphone. But don't be deceived, because inside, it is all new. So how is it different? First, it has a new chip inside. The A5 chip that we've launched just this year in the iPad 2 is now making its way into the iPhone. This is an apple design chip that's remarkable. It's a dual-core processor. It delivers performance that's up to twice as fast at CPU tasks. It's also dual core graphics, which means the graphics can be up to seven times faster than they were in the previous iPhone. This is going to help across all the kinds of applications you might use. But one area that we really see at Scream is on games. What developers can do with gameplay on a phone will be remarkable. To show you just what that can be like, I'm really proud to invite up the president of Epic Games, Mike Cap, to show you something unbelievable. Mike? Thanks, Tom. Hi, folks. So a year ago, we showed our Unreal Engine 3 game technology running for the very first time on iOS. With groundbreaking visuals and unique gameplay, Infinity Blade was a, a really huge success for Epic Games. We delighted millions of players, and we booked almost $20 million in revenue, which is a pretty good share of that $3 billion number we saw. <laughs> so that's why I'm so excited today to show you for the very first time our next iOS exclusive that leverages that A5 chip, Infinity Blade 2. Donald? Today we're going to show you visuals like you've never seen before on a handheld device. In fact, we're going to show you some graphics techniques that aren't even seen on high-end gaming consoles. So this may all look pre-rendered, but I swear this is all running in real time on that A5. We join our hero Cyrus as he embarks on his journey to find the Worker of Secrets, the legendary creator of the Infinity Blade. His goal is to get him to join him in his quest to track down and destroy the Deathless. So these uh, light shafts coming through the door are called dynamic light rays, or god rays. This is tech we only recently added to our engine and showed for the first time in our other hit game, Gears of War 3, and it's already running on this amazing device. Infinity Blade 1 concentrated on incredibly detailed and lifelike character animation, but now with the power of the A5, we can bring that detail to the rest of the environment with fireflies dancing in the air and leaves blowing in the wind, the reflections in the water, we even have koi swimming in the pond. 
mean, look at that, beautiful. Right? And so all this adds up to a realistic and immersive world that feels like you're in the middle of a movie, but again, this is all running real time. Infinity Blade 2 is loaded with new gameplay features, including the ability to customize your own weapons. Now that guy looks pretty scary, so I'm gonna use another new feature, the option to use two swords. <laughs> You can really see the character shadowing coming to life here. His headdress is on his shoulders, his helmet is casting down onto his chest. Just makes everything feel more grounded and alive. So while this Titan's vulnerable, he's tapping these attack points to unleash a flurry of blows. But it looks like all you've done is upset him, Don. <laughs> You're in trouble now. <laughs> I, uh, I think I got this. Actually, maybe I don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, that's what I get for doubting you, sir. <laughs> Infinity Blade 2 is gonna bring these eye-melting graphics, online social challenges, dozens of new enemies, hundreds of new weapons, and it's only gonna run like this on an iPhone 4S. Why? Because it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it, Phil. Thanks. Infinity Blade will be available December 1st. What better word than that was killer. It's <laughs> just killer. Unbelievable. So that's a great example of the performance you're going to get out of the brand new iPhone 4S with this A5 chip and all its capabilities. Now you would think if you put a processor that powerful inside a super thin phone, one of the things you're going to trade off is battery life. But the hardware and software teams have worked really hard to get industry leading battery life as well. For the first time in an iPhone, we now have eight hours of talk time on 3G. It's incredible battery life. Here are some of the other numbers. Eight hours of 3G talk time, 14 hours of 2G talk time, six hours of browsing your network, nine hours on Wi-Fi, 10 hours of watching video, 40 hours of listening to music. Fantastic battery life. So that's our first new feature, making the iPhone 4S all new. That A5 chip, incredible performance, and great battery life. Second, the wireless system. As you know, in the iPhone, we've revolutionized with a stainless steel band made up of two antennas on the outside that make the phone even thinner. And our engineering team has worked really hard at advancing the state of the art with something new. They've done something really technically amazing that's never been done in a phone before. Can now intelligently switch between the two antennas for both transmit and receive. Again, that's never been done. And this works even while you're on a call. You can switch between the antennas to make even better call quality. So that's the new antenna system. But it isn't just better at improving your call quality, it's also faster too. You can now download data to twice as fast as before. So what does that mean? Well, previously with the iPhone 4, you could upload data this is theoretical maximum performance, as we always quote, 5.8 megabits per second up and 7.2 down. And now with the new iPhone 4S, that doubles to up to 14.4 megabits per second down. Now if you follow the phone industry, these numbers might sound familiar. 5.8 up, 14.4 down. Where have I heard that before? Well, this is what the majority of our competitors claim when they talk about 4G performance. The Motorola Atrix 4G, the LG Thrill 4G, the HTC Inspire 4G, they even put it in their names. We're not gonna get into a debate in the industry of what's 4G and what isn't. We leave that to others to talk about. What's most important when it comes to real world performance, the iPhone 4S is just as fast as all these phones. In fact, we think with some of our software enhancements, it's even faster in real world use. So that's performance. Next, a world phone. If you know about these technologies, you know that the iPhone 4 came in two flavors, GSM 
and CDMA. To carry a GSM phone as your home network, when you roam around the world, you're more likely to find a GSM network that you can roam on. If you choose CDMA as your home network, well, you can't roam on a GSM network with an iPhone 4 when you travel. Well, now the iPhone 4S is a world phone. It has both GSM and CDMA. So when you're traveling with GSM, of course, you can roam on those networks. When you're traveling, you have CDMA as your home network, you can roam on GSM networks around the world. That really benefits customers a lot. So that's the new antenna system. A breakthrough in switching between two antenna technologies, the ability to have faster downloads twice as fast, and a world phone. Third, the camera system. You've heard and you all know firsthand just how great the pictures you can take with an iPhone are. And customers love using it because they're beautiful and they have it with them all the time. And you've seen some of the numbers, I'm sure. The iPhone 4, not all iPhones, just the iPhone 4 is already past all other cameras and phones for taking pictures and posting them on internet sites like Flickr. Beating every point and shoot and DSLR, it's really great. So when we set out to create an all new phone, a camera in the iPhone 4S, we didn't set our sights on just making it better than every other phone. We've already done that. We set our sights on competing with the quality of many great point and shoot cameras. So it really is the one camera you want to have with you all the time. So what's this new camera inside the iPhone 4S like? Well, let me tell you all about it. First, it starts with a new sensor, an eight megapixel sensor. This lets you take photos that are 3264 by 2448. That means you can print out an eight by 10 glossy photo that's pixel perfect. It's gorgeous. That's 60% more pixels than were in the iPhone 4's camera sensor. Now, if you know about digital camera sensors, you know the more pixels you pack in, it doesn't actually make a picture better. That'll make a picture worse, unless you do something really smart. And our team has done that. This new sensor is a state-of-the-art CMOS backside illuminated sensor. It allows us to gather 73% more light per pixel than the iPhone 4 sensor did, giving much richer colors, much better low light performance. And it's a lot faster too, a third faster at taking that picture. On top of that sensor, we place a hybrid IR filter. This is the kind of stuff you talk about with high-end DSLRs. It allows us to create more accurate colors and more uniform colors across your whole picture from edge to edge. And one of the most important elements of a great camera system is the optics. And here we've really gone overboard. We have an amazing lens system. Five Apple design custom lenses. There were four in the iPhone 4. This allows us to make an even sharper picture, 30% sharper. And the lens opening is now a really wide f2.4. Now, for those of you who know about cameras, know compared to most point and shoots, that's a very wide open lens aperture. It means you can let in more light, better low light performance. So that's a lot on the camera itself. But it doesn't stop with the camera because we use some really smart algorithms inside the iPhone 4S. We use that A5 chip to do some incredible stuff. For example, oh, I'm, I, and I left off one important thing. So I, there's one part of the A5 we haven't told you about. Inside the A5 is an Apple Design Image Signal Processor too. It's really powerful for doing things like advanced face detection algorithms. So not only can the iPhone 4S tell if you're trying to take a portrait shot and there's a person in it, it can tell if there's up to 10 people in it and get the best auto exposure across all their faces. And it does an amazing job with white balance. The auto white balance is even better in the iPhone 4, which was already state of the art. And that chip is really fast. It can take super fast photos. Well, what do we mean? Well, here's some other phones out there that have put eight megapixel camera sensors in them. Not as good as we've done, but let's look at their speed. The Droid Bionic, to take that first picture, 3.7 seconds. The Galaxy S2, HD sensation, about two seconds. The new iPhone 4S, 1.1 seconds. And it gets even faster. You go to take another picture, it's just a half a second longer to get that second picture on the iPhone 4S. The other guys, <laughs> yep. The other guys, two to three seconds, three, two to three times longer. And I don't know what Droid Bionic customers have to do between taking a picture. It's like, go get coffee. <laughs> but none of that matters, right? 
all that matters is, can I take great pictures? So what I'm going to do next is show you some pictures that we've taken with the iPhone 4S. And these are exactly as they've come off the iPhone 4S. We've not manipulated and enhanced or done anything with these photos. So here's a beautiful landscape shot taken with the iPhone 4S. There's some hot air balloons going up, and you see that dynamic range of color, how vibrant those colors are. It's a fun portrait shot. You show great skin tones, amazing auto white balance. You also take macro photos. You can tap on something close up. Check this out. The squirrel. You can see the hairs on the nose of the squirrel. And do you know how hard it is to get a squirrel to stand still? <laughs> Not easy. This is a great shot to show color uniformity and the lack of distortion from corner to corner in the photo. It's a really great sense and a really great lens. You get great range of color, rich, sharp, rich blacks, very sharp contrast. It's a great shot of water, a wave crashing on a rock. Look how fast this is. Look at that wave frozen in time as a splash is hanging in midair. I'll end it with this one. I could go on and on, but I'll end it here. This is a, a nice beginning of evening shot. You see a little bit of depth of field, right? You've seen that in a couple of these photos. The background's blurred because that aperture 2.4 allows us to get a little depth of field. And, and you get just what you want in a sunset photo to start of that salmon color that the sun makes. A bad auto white balance setting would, would make this sort of a neutral gray and ruin the beautiful color, but not the iPhone 4S. So that's the camera system, all new inside the iPhone 4S, and it takes stunning photos. Next, video recording. Use that same camera system and all the things we've just talked about to take stunning HD video. And for the first time, it is now 1080p HD video, just the resolution you want. And we use that powerful image signal processor inside the A5 chip to do some incredible things, like real-time video image stabilization. As you know, as you make a video camera smaller and smaller, it gets harder to hold it really still. So this helps remove a lot of that shakiness you could get. And we try to improve the video quality in real time by doing temporal noise reduction, especially helps in low light scenarios. So of course, I'm dying to show you what this looks like. But we've captured some video. We've made it into a home movie, so we've edited it with some sound and some, and some cuts. But this is exactly the video quality you get out of the new iPhone 4S. Let's play that. For many customers, this iPhone 4S will be the best still camera they've ever owned, the best video camera they've ever owned, and they have it with them everywhere they go. Next, one of actually the best kept secrets of features on the iPhone and the iPad is AirPlay. Our customers love AirPlay. And as you know, AirPlay lets you stream your music wirelessly from your iPhone to any AirPlay-enabled stereo or speaker system. And if you have Apple TV plugged into your TV set, you can stream your photos right up onto your TV set to share with your family and friends. And you can play videos right from your iPhone up on your TV. And something we just introduced on, on iPad 2, we're now also bringing to iPhone 4S, the ability to do AirPlay mirroring. This means everything you see on your screen can be up on TV. Whether you're giving a presentation or playing a game, it's perfect to have the interaction right there on your phone screen and up on the large TV set. And if you don't have, an Apple TV plug-in, maybe you're going to a friend's house. Well, you can also just plug in an HDMI cable and do it over the wire as well. So that's AirPlay and video mirroring. So the new iPhone 4S, entirely new on the inside with an A5 chip that's unbelievable in performance. A great new wireless system with dual antennas that are automatically switched between them. 
and it's a world phone and twice as fast downloads. This incredible camera, eight megapixel with all new optics, the A5 chip driving great ISP algorithms, a 1080p video camera built in, AirPlay, wireless mirroring, and on top of all that, of course, comes with iOS 5, and all the great software you've heard about there. And of course, it's now part of this amazing service called iCloud that lets us have all of our content wherever we are. So that's the iPhone 4S. It's the best iPhone yet. We haven't told you really the best feature of it. Left one thing out. And this is really cool. It's a feature all about our voice. Because for decades, technologists have teased us with this dream that you're going to be able to talk to technology and it'll do things for us. Haven't we seen this before over and over? But it never comes true. We have very limited capability. You just learn a syntax, call a name, dial a number, play a song. It is such a letdown. What we really want to do is just talk to our device, ask a simple question. What's the weather going to be like today? And get a response. In fact, we don't want to be told how to talk to it. We want to talk to it any way we'd like. Someone else might ask, will it rain in Cupertino? Or is the weather going to get worse today? Or do I need an umbrella today? And your device, in this case your phone, will figure out what you mean and help you get what you want done. That's a feature in the iPhone 4S we call Siri. Siri is your intelligent assistant that helps you get things done just by asking. So really the best way to understand how amazing the Siri technology is in the iPhone 4S is with a demo. But I'll start by saying this demo, of course, is a beta software. And probably one of the craziest things you could ever do is a voice recognition demo on stage in front of an audience. <laughs> but you're going to like this so much that we're going to try and do it anyway. So what I'd like to do is invite Scott Forstall back up to give us a demo of Siri. Scott. I'm really excited to show you Siri. You can get to Siri uh, at any time just by holding down the home button for a couple seconds, and then Siri's listening to you. So let's go ahead and ask Siri about the weather. What is the weather like today? Here's the forecast for today. It is that easy. <laughs> Not only did it understand the words I said, it understands the meaning and the goes and gives me this weather forecast. But the exact words I say aren't important. It's the meaning behind the words. So I could ask this in a completely different way. Something like, what is the hourly forecast? Here's the weather for today. Again, different words, Siri figures out the meaning. In fact, you can even ask more conceptual questions. Things like, do I need a raincoat today? It sure looks like rain today. <laughs> and you saw as you came in, it was raining. So it understands the concept of raincoat and umbrella and other things. And it knows how that relates to weather and answers the question. So we've integrated in with weather We've integrated it in with all sorts of things on iOS. So let me go and ask it a question using the clock. Something like, what time is it in Paris? The time in Paris, France is 8.16 PM. So again, it, it recognized the words, understood the meaning, and then comes back with this live clock ticking down the seconds, showing what time it is in Paris. But you can ask other questions like, Let's say you need to set an alarm clock. Just ask Siri. Wake me up tomorrow at 6 AM. OK, I set it for 6 AM. It's that easy.
Again, we've integrated with lots of things. We've integrated with the stocks. So you can ask it about the stock market. Something like, how is the NASDAQ doing today? NASDAQ composite is down right now at 2,321.70. And again, you can ask this from the lock screen anywhere. Just press the button and ask. You can ask about you know, the NASDAQ, the Dow, or any specific stock as well. We've also partnered with Yelp. And so you can ask questions about businesses or restaurants. Something like, find me a great Greek restaurant in Palo Alto. I found 14 Greek restaurants. Five of them are in Palo Alto. I've sorted them by rating. Yeah. Now, I've been in the AI field for a long time, and this still blows me away. The fact that it understands the words, the concepts, and even how now ranks it by Yelp's ordering. We've also integrated it with maps. So you can just ask Siri for directions. Let's say I want to go to Hoover Tower on the Stanford campus. All I say is, give me directions to Hoover Tower. Here are directions to Hoover Tower. So again, it recognized what I meant. It found Hoover Tower, takes me right to maps, shows me the directions. You can even ask for things like, you know, what's the traffic around here? Now, sometimes your phone is, is locked in your pocket, and you're in a hands-free environment. So you might have a Bluetooth headset on. And you receive a text message or an iMessage, and you hear it come yeah. in, but it's in your pocket, and you don't want to take it out of your pocket. So with Siri, you can just ask Siri to read it to you. So you can just press on that button on the Bluetooth headset. I'll simulate it by pressing the home button here. But this can all be done hands-free. And just ask Siri, read my message. New message from Phil Schiller. When can we have lunch? So it reads it hands-free to me. You can reply or read it again. So before I reply, I think I want to have lunch on Friday. Hands-free now, I can just ask Siri about my calendar. I can ask it, do I have any meetings Friday at noon? You don't have anything on your calendar for this Friday at 12 PM. Fantastic. So let me go ahead and reply to Phil now that I can make it. Reply, I can do Friday. Here's your reply to Phil Schiller. Ready to send it? I can uh, respond with my voice, or I can just tap on the button, so I'll go ahead and respond. OK, I'll send your message. Now, you noticed I said reply. I didn't say reply to Phil Schiller. Siri is following along the conversation just like a human does and knows when I said reply, I meant Phil. Now let me go ahead, again, all hands free, and schedule that lunch just by talking to my phone. Schedule lunch on Friday at noon with Phil Schiller. OK, I set up your meeting with Phil Schiller for this Friday. Are you ready for me to schedule it? Go ahead and confirm that. OK, I scheduled your meeting with Phil Schiller for this Friday. Now, again, this is blow away. I had it read me my message. I checked my calendar. I dictated my response and scheduled it all hands free just by talking to my iPhone, just by talking to Siri. But there's more. <laughs> I told you about the Reminders app earlier. The Reminders is integrated perfectly with Siri. So you can create a reminder just like this. Remind me to call my wife when I leave work. Here's your reminder for when you leave work. Shall I create it? Sure, let's confirm that. OK, I'll remind you. So again, in an earlier conversation, it asked me who my wife was, and now it knows. And so I just say, you know, remind me about my wife, it's now set up a geofence around work, in this case, Apple for me. When I leave Apple, it'll put up an alert reminding me to call my wife. It's amazing. We've also integrated in with web searches. You can search things like Wikipedia just by talking to it. So let's say you're learning about the space program and you want to look up Neil Armstrong. Just take out your phone and ask Siri. Search Wikipedia for Neil Armstrong. Searching for Neil Armstrong. 
So again, it's that fast to look something up. It takes me right to Safari, right to the article in Wikipedia. Now, we've also partnered with Wolfram Alpha, and they have all sorts of information you can ask questions about. In fact, they have an entire dictionary built in. So now, to define a word, it's as easy as asking Siri to define it, like this. Define mitosis. Let me think about that. I found this for you. It's mitosis, cell division in which the nucleus divides into nuclei containing the same number of chromosomes. Again, it is that easy now to look anything up in a dictionary. You just ask your personal assistant, Siri. Now let's say you're off in Europe and you see something and it costs 45 euros. And you're wondering, well, how many dollars is that? Well, just ask Siri. How many dollars is 45 euros? Let me check on that. This might answer your question. So what Siri does is it goes, it looks out, figures out the current exchange rate, and tells me that 45 euros is $59.59 .59 right now. It even gives me a history of the exchange rates and, you know, for extra measure, translates it into a number of other currencies as well. Now, one of my favorite things is, you know, sometimes your kids will ask, how many days is it until my birthday? Or how many days is it until Christmas? It's not an easy thing to calculate, but now you just ask your phone, like this. How many days are there until Christmas? Let me check on that. I found this for you. 82 days until Christmas. Get shopping. So <laughs> it's just that easy. You can ask. I mean, you can ask so many questions of Siri. Now, you can't ask everything, and it's not perfect, but there's so much you can ask it that we decided to build a guide right into the user interface so it's quick and easy for you to see what kind of questions you can ask. So when you hold down the button and the Siri UI comes up, there's an I button, an information button on the right-hand side. Tap on that to build, bring up the guide. Let me go ahead and show you that. So press and hold, tap on the I button. Now here's all the sorts of things you can do with Siri. You can voice dial, so call someone just by saying their name. You can control your music. You can control playing you know, an artist or an album, but now you can also play any song you want, including any song you might have on iTunes in the cloud, and it'll download it and start playing it for you. Or even a genre, you can say, please you know, play some rap music for me, play some classical music, and it'll automatically start playing that for you. You can use it for messages, send and receive, text messages, iMessages. You can manage your calendar now with your voice, schedule meetings, check, check on meetings, move meetings around, cancel meetings, all just with your voice. It's integrated in with reminders, as you saw, and with maps. You can ask for traffic and directions. Email. You can compose and dictate emails right to Siri. You can ask questions about the weather and about stocks. With a the clock, there's a lot of things you can do. In addition to things like uh, the alarm clock, you can set timers. So let's say you're, you stick something in the oven, you're going to bake it, you need to take it out in 30 minutes. Just take your phone and ask Siri to set a timer for 30 minutes and you're done. You can look up things for contacts, you can create notes, you can search the web, you can search Wikipedia, and all the other questions you can ask of Wolfram Alpha. It is absolutely blow away. Now you might ask, well, who is Siri? Let's well, just ask. Who are you? I am a humble personal assistant. <laughs> and that is Siri. Siri is your humble, intelligent, personal assistant that goes everywhere with you and can do things for you just by you asking. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. And that is the coolest feature of the new iPhone 4S. In addition to controlling it with your voice and getting things back and information, as Scott showed you, it goes further. Siri also does dictation. So now, anywhere you see a keyboard in an application, you'll see a microphone on the iPhone 4S. You can tap on it, get a simple user interface for now, starting to talk to Siri. 
When you're done with your passage, you tap done, sends it up to our server, and in a blink of an eye, it comes back with your text. It's that simple and that deeply integrated into the system. So Siri, you can speak with your natural language. It's conversational. It understands context of the things you're talking about as you're following along. It's personal in that it's amazing right out of the box, but it actually even gets better as you use it and learns your voice. As you've seen, it's built in with many of our applications. It adds dictation anywhere there's a keyboard. And there's software in the iPhone 4S, and there's software in our data center making this all happen. And this works across Wi-Fi as well as 3G. When we launch the iPhone 4S, it'll be built in with support for English, French, and German. And as we've said, it will be beta at the start. And you've seen how great it is already. By beta, we mean we'll add more languages over time and more services over time as well. So that's Siri. And now you understand all that's new inside the new iPhone 4S, a whole new chip, a great new antenna system with these dual antennas, and it's a world phone and faster. It's incredible new 8 megapixel camera with all new optics, the 1080p HD video camera, AirPlay, everything about iOS 5, all the amazing capabilities of iCloud, and now Siri. We're really excited about the iPhone 4S. And to help customers learn about it, we've created a video. I'd like to play that for you now. iPhone 4 was groundbreaking. It's one of the best products we've ever designed, and it's gone on to become the number one smartphone in the world. So we had this challenge. How do you improve on something that's so extraordinary? Well, with iPhone 4S, we did exactly that. By taking this amazing design and completely rethinking the inside. We started by adding the dual core A5 chip, which is up to twice as fast. Then we completely redesigned the camera, which not only has eight megapixels, but all new optics. iPhone 4S also comes with iOS 5 with over 200 new features and iCloud. And now we're introducing Siri. How can I help you? Siri is a whole new way of interacting with your iPhone using just your voice. Find me an Italian restaurant in North Beach. Okay, these 25 Italian restaurants are in North Beach. It's like this amazing assistant that listens to you, understands you, can answer your questions, and can even accomplish tasks for you. Move my meeting with Kelly Altec to 12. Note that you already have a meeting about budgets at 12 p.m. Shall I schedule this anyway? Move it to two. A lot of devices can recognize the words you say, but the ability to understand what you mean and act on it, that's the breakthrough with Siri. Read me my text. New message from Tony Rivas. Are you going to the party? Reply, yeah, I'll meet you there. Remind me to grab the present when I get home. Here's your reminder for when you get home. It completely changes the way you think about what a phone can do for you. One of the biggest advances for the iPhone 4S is in its performance. It uses the same powerful dual-core A5 chip that's in iPad 2. With two processors handling the workload, it really makes a big difference. Apps will launch and run faster. Graphics can render up to seven times quicker, making gameplay a lot better. And in Safari, web pages will load up to twice as fast. And it's the world's first phone to intelligently switch between two antennas to transmit and receive calls. iPhone 4S is now a world phone, so both GSM and CDMA customers can roam worldwide on GSM networks. iPhone 4S also has an all-new 8-megapixel camera, which dramatically increases the amount of detail in your photos. But the quality of a photograph isn't just about megapixels. The optics of the camera are just as crucial. And we've made significant improvements here. We increased the size of the aperture to let more light in. We added a fifth lens, which gives you a sharper image overall. And the new sensor is designed to capture more light within each pixel. So you get far sharper photos with more detail and more accurate color. When you see the quality of the photos you get from this camera, it's hard to believe they came from a mobile phone. We also know people love to shoot video on their iPhone, 
so we've made some big advancements here too. iPhone 4S records 1080p HD video at 30 frames per second. Plus, the gyro, along with the incredible new software, will stabilize your video as you shoot it. This will make your videos look a lot smoother. We've taken what was already an amazing camera and made it even better. Now with face detection, the camera is smart enough to know whether you're taking a portrait or a group shot and automatically focus and expose for either. You get quicker access to your camera right from the lock screen. You can use the volume button to take a photo and then you can crop, enhance, and edit your photo right on your iPhone iOS 5 gives you over 200 other new and improved features, including Notification Center, iMessage, and Reminders. iPhone 4S also comes with iCloud. iCloud stores your music, photos, apps, mail, contacts, calendars, documents, and more, and wirelessly pushes your content to your devices automatically. With iCloud, you don't have to do anything. It just works. We've thought through every square millimeter of what's inside the iPhone 4S. With the new dual-core A5 chip, it's so much faster. The new camera is incredible. It comes with iOS 5 and iCloud. And with Siri, your iPhone can do things no other phone has ever done. iPhone 4S is the most amazing iPhone yet. So that's the iPhone 4S. It comes in black and white. 16 gigabytes for $199, 32 gigabytes for $299, and 64 gigabytes for $399. And that's with the typical US carrier two-year contract, 64 gigabytes, first time in an iPhone. Now, the iPhone 4S is not the only uh, phone in our lineup. We still have the best phones at a number of price points, of course, there's the 3GS and the iPhone 4, and they're not going away. The iPhone 4 will now be available in black and white in one configuration, 8 gigabytes for just $99. And the iPhone 3GS, available with 8 gigabytes, free. Yeah, this again, typical two-year contracts. So now look at this lineup, an 8 gigabyte iPhone 3GS for free, an iPhone 4 at just $99, and the brand new iPhone 4S at $199. That's incredibly aggressive, something fantastic, the best phones at each price point in the entire marketplace. The iPhone 4S, pre-orders will start on the 7th, just this Friday, and will be available in a week on October 14th, a week from Friday. So on October 14th, we'll see it come out in the United States, Canada, Australia, the UK, France, Germany, and Japan. In the US, of course, we're available with AT&T, our long-term partner, and with our great new partner, Verizon, and for the first time on Sprint as well. Japan, of course, will be available with SoftBank, our great partner there, and also for the first time, KDDI. A couple weeks later, on October 28th, we'll reach about 22 more countries, starting to move it around the world. There's not many weeks left in the year, but by the end of the year, amazingly, we're going to have brought it out to 70 countries, over 100 carrier partners, and all told, this will be the fastest rollout we've ever had for an iPhone. And that's the iPhone 4S. Thank you. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? Let's review today's announcements. iOS 5, the world's most advanced mobile operating system now with 200 new features. iCloud, a breakthrough set of free cloud services that just work wirelessly and seamlessly. iPhone 4S, the most amazing iPhone ever. Now with a dual core A5 chip, 1080p HD video recording, an all new camera with advanced optics, and this amazing thing we call Siri, your own personal assistant. Now, when you look at each of these, 
They're great and fantastic and industry leading in and of themselves. But what sets them apart and what puts Apple way out front is how they're engineered to work together so well. When you think about it, only Apple could make such amazing software, hardware, and services and bring them together into such a powerful yet integrated experience. I am so incredibly proud of this company and all of the teams that work so hard to bring all of the innovations that you've seen today to reality. I want to thank you for joining us this morning, the members of the press and our, our special guest. Thank you very much.